ransomware attacks are rapidly evolving, and your data at the core of many of your business critical operations is at risk more than ever. The question has become when, not if, your organization will be affected. Wouldn't it be nice to not only be prepared, but alerted when an attack happens? In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at Commvault ThreatScan, our new scanning capability that scans backups for malware and other nefarious changes. Within this demonstration, we're going to simulate a ransomware attack that infects a bunch of files, show how we can analyze the backup content, and finally, do a clean recovery of your data. On my server, I'm going to look at my clean files pre-infection. You can see I have a bunch of PDFs in my favorites file. When I open them up, they are visible. When you read these files, you can tell that they're not encrypted and not corrupted. These files have already been backed up. Now, I'm going to run my ransomware simulation. This tool is going to simulate my entire F drive, which is about 10,000 files. All the files in my folder will get encrypted. I'll go back over to the folder, and you can see that the process has already started. You can see that the extensions are changing to Nevada. These files are now encrypted by ransomware. If I go over to my Splunk SIM platform, you can see that I'm starting to get file activity anomaly alerts. This is indicating that there's anomalous activity occurring on that server. This is being sent via the SIM connector from within Commvault. Now, within the Commvault command center, I'm going to go to Security IQ. Within Security IQ, I have an alert on my dashboard for the unusual file activity. You can see there's one triggered. If I click it, that's a shortcut that'll take me to my monitoring dashboard so I can view my anomalies in action. You can see that my server has a lot of activity. About 3,000 files so far have indicated that they changed in an unusual way, so I'm going to go ahead and analyze this file data, pick my scanning server, then click Analyze. While the file data analysis is processing, I also have a threat analysis data classification plan pre-configured. This is running malware scans on my backups so I can find malware within the backup content. Next, I'm going to create a tag. This is just a good way of marking this server as being in the works, like, we're investigating this server. Since we've given it some time, I'm going to refresh the screen now and move this ahead into the future. The file data analysis and threat analysis operations have completed, and we now have some results on the dashboard. These results will also get sent via an alert. That way, you're notified as soon as there is a threat detected. It'll be sent to your SIM or your email alerts, depending on where you've set up your alerts. As you see here, we have a bunch of file counts that are detected as being suspicious for different types of anomalies. Within the Threat Analysis tab, you can see I have a bunch of malware and threats found within my backup content. My File Data tab is telling me that my files are potentially infected with ransomware, or they've been corrupted. Let's click Threat Analysis to get more details. This will take me to the dashboard to show me that I have several malware threats that were detected within the backup content. I can analyze this further on the timeline as well as see the individual files that were detected. You can see that it's within my F folder in the Finance folder. I have a bunch of malware that was detected. We make this process simple for you and your team. No actions are required because these threats are automatically quarantined. So, when you do a recovery, you don't have to worry about reinfecting your environment. Now, let's take a look at the file data dashboard. This is going to give me an overview of my files that are backed up and have been marked as suspicious. This is based on the various algorithms that we look at when we analyze the files. From this dashboard, you can view the different files that were inspected, see the type of reasons why they were marked as suspicious, either by high entropy or significant changes. Let's go to my favorites folder and look at the files. We know that those files are good. We can see here that one of my files has multiple versions that was analyzed. One of them is suspicious and the other one is not. Let's take a look at the one that's not and get a preview of the file. You can see here that this version of the file in my backup is good. Now if I look at the suspicious version, a preview cannot be generated. 
You can see on the right-hand side, there's different reasons why it's marked as suspicious. First, it's marked as suspicious because when you compare it to the other versions of this file, there's been a significant number of changes to this file. Additionally, there's a high entropy. You can even see the entropy score on the right-hand side. I'll go ahead and mark this file corrupt so that it will quarantine the file at the index layer. That way, when I do my restores, the good version of my file is automatically picked and the infected version is skipped. I've already cleaned up my server from the ransomware attack, so now I need to start the recovery of my clean data. To begin, go to Recover Files and I'll go to my F drive. You can see that when I go to my Favorites AI folder, which was the folder that we were at in the beginning of this demo, I have all good versions of my files. The Nevada versions and the encrypted versions are being filtered out and are quarantined. So, when I do my recovery, it'll only recover the good versions. I'll go ahead and recover the entire folder and restore it in place. I'll go back over to my server, and when I look at the folder, you can see my good versions of the files are recovered, and I've avoided reinfecting my environment. Mm -hmm.